Hi. Hey, it's Bridget. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. So, (sighs) I'm not sure how I'm going to share and inspire (laughs) today. I am not feeling particularly bad, but... I'm kind of feeling like, okay, so there's like this time warp vibe going on for me. So you know when you're going through a lot, there's just so much that's happening or has happened. Like you can think about this using COVID for an example. Like remember 2020? Doesn't that seem like so long ago? And does it, don't you even like ask yourself, did that really happen? Like did that happen? Was that real? And it's just hard to, like, time becomes this kind of warped understanding or remembering is, is so crazy because it's kind of spiraled. Now, you can get into all the philosophy about if time is layered or linear or how it works, etc. And so the mind, obviously, is patterned off the calendar and off the passage of time or the loss of time. And so too, then the body at some degree, obviously, we all have expiration date on our bodies. And so that is somewhat in part with connected to that, right? Like our calendar time, our linear time. Yet this spiraling of energy, wherein we can have remembrances, moments where we can remember like past lives. And also, let me just tell you, future lifetimes, And also the most important thing, which is where you are here now, the dot on the map that you are here in this moment, that is the most important thing. And yet as I sit here on the floor cross-legged with a cup of warm tea in my hand, I'm feeling out of time. I'm feeling out of the flow of what would be considered time and super aware intellectually that I have an appointment in a while to go to and that I have things I need to do in order to go to an event, a holiday thing this evening. So I'm thinking about that, but at the same time, I'm in this void, this abyss, just for the moment. The you are here dot. It's sort of like a time warp. Instead of warped time, maybe it's a wrapping of time, like a cocooning of time. And so often energetically, when our bodies feel into the natural rhythm of nature and take our cues from that, our environment, which we do anyway in our human relationships, hello, the brain is all about that, right? Right? creating a structure for proper standards of behavior and etiquette in different environments. Hello, we're used to that. Why don't we then take a moment to acknowledge the reflection of nature and what is organic for us, which is to be at one with and feel into that rhythm of the time that it is when the trees don't have leaves, when they're resting, they're conserving their energy. So then I have permission to conserve my energy. And I can be quiet and still. And I can allow myself time to soak up the peacefulness. Even in the midst of chaos, even when the winter storms are buzzing around me and it's bending the leaves that seem naked and vulnerable as the tree. I'm strong. So are you. We don't have to prove our strength and our worthiness and our resiliency. We don't have to show that or demonstrate it. We get to just know in these still points, these time-wrapped points, that we are here and present in this life now as a gift. We came into this life as a gift. 
and we will leave it at some point. And I promise you at that moment that you leave, when you have recognition that you have left your body and that this lifetime is over, I promise you, you will look upon all of these quiet moments when you know you can stand up and walk out of the room and walk into your child's bedroom and give them a hug. These quiet moments when you know you can walk into the kitchen and make a cup of tea. These quiet moments when you know you have a roof over your head and so many privileged choices. Yet at the same time, all of this existing and wondering while you are living those moments, how does my heart play into this? What do I do with these emotions? So much wasted time on lost, sad endings of relationships, of opportunities. So much collective sadness and grief. And yet, at that moment, when I'm done here, I know I'll look back and what I'll remember is the quiet, the moments at peace within my heart because I'm present for my body. I'm present in the moment without the need to suffer or sacrifice or move to prove through action my dedication, my love, my value. So I sit here with my warm tea. Giving myself permission to lay down the pain and the hurt over this past year. It is not a shield. Let it be like my teacup on a saucer holding me. Allowing me to hover over the hurt and the pain and the sadness. And the truth is, in this moment, I can't even feel it. Any of it. The responsibility, the obligation. All the times I've had to explain myself over and over again. All the times I've had to listen to another person share with me what they need that I can't provide. Knowing that I can't provide it. The devastating reality of realizing you're not enough. And it's because you're not in the right place. You are not in alignment with that relationship. You are not in alignment with that person. Even if it's your child. It's a big blow, isn't it? You are not connecting for some reason at this point. You're not resonating. So in a healthy way, you have permission to disconnect. Disconnection is not abandonment. It is the ability to free the other person, to allow them to work through some of their own agony and angst. Because when you step in and try to calm down or cool the fire, it does not work because the fire is meant to burn to release, to clear, to heal them. It is their individual personal process just like you have your own. Just like yours has been this past year explaining over and over again. As you're constantly evolving and changing and growing. What appears to be disconnection is really you no longer sitting down. It is you standing up to reach for the higher fruits on the tree. 
to stretch your arms up through your central channel of light, of wholeness, of beauty, of divine. Not for others. I know it feels so, it's hard. I know it's hard because when you think back and the memories and I should be, there is some place I should be right now and I'm not there. That feeling is hard to come to terms with and yet no fault of our own, right? It might not be your fault. What you thought life would look like this time last year is not that, it's not there. And in fact, maybe the people that were going to be in your life that you thought would be there all the time are gone. And maybe they're physically gone. And maybe they're just emotionally detached because they're dealing with their own stuff right now. But here you are, feeling so alone. Feeling the loss of what could have been, what should have been. And also with this profound, deep understanding with the organic nature of the rhythm of life that it is December and it is time for endings. (laughs) I'm reminded of a saying which goes something like this. It says, don't look back. You're not going that way. People do things for different reasons that have nothing to do with you. Life happens in ways that are a collaboration of seemingly strange events. Your job isn't to make sense of it or to try to find meaning or understanding. It's not. I know that sometimes there's this spiritual lean to understand something and that there's a bigger meaning and a bigger purpose. That's... That's not acceptable to me right now. In this moment, the spiritual context is stillness and honoring myself and recognizing that I have been through hell. And I know that I will continue to walk through cold, lonely times. And so will you. You can be in a room full of people and be alone. And there's a desire to want to be understood, to want to be loved for who you are, as you are. I know this. I know this. As you are changing, as you are growing to know more of yourself each day, each week, each month, each year, you're working on yourself. And sometimes that's really messy. And that's natural and organic. That's normal. We didn't come here for perfection. We came here for the experience of it. And the dark times are the times that are hard. Are the times when we get to be with ourselves in such an intimate connection and renew our commitment to our spirit inside of us as an individual to honor ourselves, to love ourselves, to be in integrity with ourselves and to not accept anything into our lives that is less than how we shall love and be in exchange with the world. We can be compassionate observers. And I know that's lonesome sometimes. So here in this time warp or this time wrap, Find solitude. Spend time with your soul, your sweet spirit. It is the nectar of life. It truly is what will always, always be there for you. That voice of God with inside you, your solar plexus, your spirit, your light is yours. Nothing you ever go through or nobody can ever tarnish it, take it, or diminish it. Not even you. 
I love you. I love your spirit. I see you as perfection, as the beautiful soul that you are, just as I see me. Thank you so much for listening today. I hope I've inspired your sweet soul, filled you with some hope, and encouraged you to live life. This is yours, nobody else. Yours.